Hey, welcome to another video. Today I am going to do something different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the ideas that my subscriber recommended and what he said is he would like to see a little bit more of Italy. I just came back from my Italy trip and I have lots of stories to tell you and lots of pictures to show. So this, is, this video is going to be more of a show and tell where I will be showing you some of my pictures that I took and I will tell you a little bit about them maybe look back into history mostly it's going to be soft-spoken just like that so hopefully you enjoy it enjoy, relax Okay, let's begin. And on this picture you see the Colosseum, one of the most popular attractions in Rome, Italy. And here you see the floor that was built up for tourists to kind of be able to see what's underneath. You can see it better on this picture. But underneath is where the gladiators and animals were housed until their fight. Quite a brutal place if you read the history, to be honest with you. And this is just me touching Colosseum. It just felt like you are so, so far back. And this building is just incredible. So I couldn't help but me put it in memory. Here is uh, the Roman Forum mm, slash Palatin Hill. Again, it's located pretty much next to the Colosseum. And another is another of those attractions. Mm, going back to Calus Colosseum, I think the previous picture was taken straight from the Colosseum. But here you see. Uh, again, from a different angle, what the Colosseum looked like. This is uh, some kind of a horse thing that I found in Colosseum. I was trying to figure out what it was. There was some history behind it, but I really didn't have that much time to read through it. So, I just took a picture of it. And this is from the first floor. And you can see the ruins a little bit closer. You can see how the bricks are still holding together years, years later. Pretty incredible. And this is a close-up of the uh, what was, was under the floor of the Colosseum. And those are the separators, kind of like a uh, a um, little bit of a labyrinth um, that was housing. Um, and uh, I mean, this one is uh, one of the arches. Um, I believe this is Severus Arch. Um, and it is just, just so monumental and grand. Here I was in Palatine Hill slash Roman form, and there is no separation between these two attractions. You kind of go in and uh, you try to figure out what's what. Um, there were lots of people there, but luckily they were kind of um, separated from one another because of how big the place was. And, um, it was kind of a rainy day. I 
which I took pictures of some views. Um, it was pretty incredible. And just seeing Rome from this perspective. You're just standing on these ancient ruins and looking at Rome. Speaking of ancient ruins, here you are. Mm, a little bit on a mm, detail. Um, the buildings, surprisingly, are still standing. Um, some of them have been destroyed by wars. But whatever is remaining, it's really incredible to just stand there and um, try to really comprehend how those Romans were able to build something grand. Okay. These are some of the other buildings within. I hard to remember what's what. Just because you're going from one place to another. For me, the main idea was to just enjoy the architecture and uh, culture. Not so much remembering every single historical detail. There were quite a few people there who um, hired a guide or were part of the group. And, but they had more time than I did. Yeah, these are the ruins of an old building. And um, you can see just how sturdy it still is years, years later. And uh, these arch structure is pretty much prevalent throughout Rome and Italy in general in churches and baptistries and any kind of a building arches were their kind of thing you can see that there are not too many people and there is nobody on this picture so it's a good place to get away from the crowds And you're basically are walking along the path on the trail right past these ancient buildings. And this is a view from um, the top. Again, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but... Uh, Again, I wasn't there just for the historical part, but more for architecture. Although, you might argue that history interrelates with architecture. And you can see that this building actually is on top. And there's a glass door. I think it was built much later. They had it on, but uh, the main part of the building was still preserved. And this is as I was exiting. Um, I took this picture. It was pretty high up there. And again, you notice the arches that has a I was mentioning, and not so far from that same place, I took this picture. And as you can see, the skies were kind of grayish that day. Okay, and this is one of those columns that is also very common in Roman culture, they were supposed to be grand, um, 
well, and of course they served a decent purpose also. And I believe we are out now in Pantheon. It's, um, uh, and this church has been well maintained. And it's very, very popular among tourists, as you can see on uh, in this picture. Um, but the reason it's, uh, lasted so long is because it's been active for years and, uh, And it's been restored pretty well. And here's the sign, Basilica, which is another name for a church. I think there's a difference between Basilica and Cathedral. Um, don't remember exactly what it is. But a lot of things that you, can, you see on these pictures are insanely ancient. You can't even imagine that somebody was sitting and writing these things on the walls and uh, using marble to construct. Look at these walls. All of it is pure marble. And uh, the reality is that marble is quite inexpensive in Italy because they have lots of it. I think that's a cool picture. Again, it shows just how grand it is. And the sculpture is the heart. Um, if you are into that kind of thing, Italy is your place. I am a little bit more into architecture um, and fountains. This actual this fountain is right outside Pantheon. I don't know if it's super famous for anything, but well, it's outside Pantheon. Should be right. I don't remember what this building is, but mm, again, it shows typical Roman architecture with a little bit of Gothic influence, it looks like. And uh, this building I found it right in the uh, near the center. Um, it was just uh, so neatly lit. I really enjoyed it. Very cool, right? Okay, moving on. And now I am on my way to Florence. And this is Roma Termini and train station. It takes about an hour and a half to get to Florence, and that was a one of those high-speed trains. The first stop is Medici Chapels, or Cappella Medici. And so Medici has been, what well, was, a, rather, a very influential family, very, very rich family of bankers. And, and when you travel in Italy, there uh, sign looks like um, a six or seven oval um, ovals on a um, this symbol. No, um, if I am able to see it on these pictures, I'll show you. But look at these. This is all made by hand from marble. Imagine doing this, carving out little pieces again by hand with no machinery and that's a um, very famous ceiling of Medici chapels and in reality it looks even more magnificent honestly um, it's hard to show in a picture what art is really like now we're doing some construction there so you'll see that some images contain um, some ladders or um, this type of construction right next to work of art. It's very hard to take a picture there because the lighting is uh, so poor. Um, 
and most of the light actually comes from um, the windows. And this is how they were carving uh, from marble and assembling each single piece and then gluing together on to this marble base. And this is very famous, I believe this is day and night, um, or maybe the other one is day and night, but uh, um, you can see these sculptures in a lot of um, images. And now we are in Academia, and this is a sculpture that Michelangelo was trying to carve out of marble, but never finished it. There are a lot, there are quite a few of them. This is Famous and David by Michelangelo. There was quite a bit of a line to even get there. Um, take a picture. It's quite a grand statue yet again. Showing quite a bit of detail of human body. Uh, Michelangelo actually, when he was um, carving out his shop, his uh, statues, he uh, medically learned about different muscle groups and things like that. He actually dissected the body to learn better and uh, more, rather, about a human body. In addition to David, there were other sculptures, not necessarily made by Michelangelo, but still, they were quite impressive. And also, you would be able to find there some paintings there. A lot of paintings were really just based, but we know how it was back then. A lot of things were based on religion. And this is where I stopped for lunch. Huh. It was quite an amazing lunch place, and I had a pizza. Cold cuts apparently are very, very popular. Oh, and that's my pizza. Oh gosh, I remember it. Just the taste of it is so delicious. There's something about how Italians make it, the dough, mozzarella, cheese, sauce, and whatever you have. Anyway, going back to the arts. Um, this is Gallery of Fizzi, one of the most famous paintings here. And it's, as you can see, shielded by glass. Again, we're still in the gallery, in the gallery, Fitzy Gallery. And this is the look down. You see how many people there are? Pretty incredible. Again, this is the look, um, the view rather from on the gallery stands right next to the river. I don't know, maybe it's a canal. Now the paintings. I didn't take too many pictures of the paintings, just the ones that I liked or the ones that were super famous. Um, but my focus was just to enjoy the atmosphere. And by atmosphere, if you look at the ceiling, you can't really tell even how much detail it has, but it does, trust me. Everything is so tiny and carved out, so, so much detail. There were also some sculptures there. Again, very much detail. Look at just this cloth. That's covering her. Very much detail. And when you go out uh, on the patio, this is the view you get from the 
Uffizi Gallery. It was a nice day that day in Florence. And that was um, one of the cool ceilings. I really liked the blue color. Also in the Uffizi Gallery. It's kind of like baby blue. <laughs> It was just incredible. Um, one of the galleries in the Fitzy Gallery with statues and uh, there was so much natural light there. And there was nobody because I was there by the end of the day, right before closing time. So it was kind of nice by the end to walk by myself and uh, enjoy the gallery. I really like these little like subsets of the gallery just because um, you can see the detail of each and every single things. Oh, and that was one of uh, my favorite ones. A little bit gory and bloody. <laughs> but quite unique if you say. And that's the view, uh, it's right next, next to Ponte Vecchio, that's the bridge that is very famous in Florence, and it has uh, little shops, uh, mostly selling jewelry, and uh, expensive things, and you can see that in on this picture, literally they're built on the bridge, um, I can't imagine what rent must be there. And this must be the most amazing lasagna I've had in my entire life, probably. Gosh, these people know how to make lasagna. That's for sure. Mm, it was a very good meal, and I think it cost me only, I don't know, maybe 18 euro. Some cheeses, I think I was just passing by and I took a picture. Um, of this, it's a usual thing in Italy. And this is, um, a picture from the outside of Fizzi Gallery. One of the squares that had lots of statues. I just find it, uh, found it very interesting. Again, there were so many people there. And interesting how much they were able to preserve these statues from, you know, them being just there. I am going to finish this up. And I hope uh, you liked this little trip to history. And if you did, let me know. And I'm considering to making some of these again.